A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. I understand that the rabbi claims that the requirement the matzah be made from start to finish in 18 minutes is a fallacy. On what does the rabbi base this claim? Let us begin by explaining some of the basics, the basic facts and concepts regarding the uh, making of bread or of matzah, which after all are very similar, although they're also quite different. The difference between matzah and bread, of course, is that one was allowed to rise and one was not allowed to rise. When we take flour from wheat, shall we say, or barley, we mix it with water. What happens to this dough if we leave it uh, aside, if we leave it alone for a period of time? What will happen to this dough? If we introduce no leavening agents, whatever, that is to say, no sourdough, no yeast of any kind, no, uh, other, no other form of leavening agent, like uh, baking soda and the like, it still may, very often, it will be the case that such a dough will rise. How will it rise? It will r r rise as a result of airborne yeasts, etc., which will attach themselves to this dough, and over a period of time, usually a few hours, it will begin to rise to at least to some extent. And this is the, the simplest way of making a dough which is chametz by allowing it to sit there for quite some time until this natural process kicks in. It's also true that it does not always kick in, it does not always uh, happen as we would wish, and that is exactly why human beings took to using uh, a starter dough or sour dough, which is, already, which is a dough that has already fermented and therefore will cause the other dough, the new dough, to do the same or to use yeast and, and the like in order to guarantee that this dough will become leavened and will rise and therefore will become good bread. When it comes to matzah, we of course do not want it to rise, we do not want it to leaven in any way and we have to be very, very careful that it should not rise. The question is therefore, how long may a dough be allowed to sit still uh, without being worked or needed in any way? For how long may such a dough be allowed to sit there before we need to suspect that it may have begun to rise, that the process of leavening has begun even though it is not yet apparent. After all, when the process of leavening has certainly taken place and has, is in an advanced stage, there are clear signs of this process of himuts, of leavening. The dough increases in size, expands in size very significantly there is a certain smell that the dough emits as a result of the fermentation and there are other physical and uh, uh, other physical and um, textural signs and and indications that the dough has risen but the question is before all these signs are apparent from what point must we begin to suspect that the dough has begun to rise has begun to leaven and even though we cannot yet see evidence of this with our own eyes. This is a, a question that is uh, discussed by the Mishnah in the Talmud in Masechet Pesachim. Masechet Pesachim in the Talmud Bavli, Daf Mem Wa Amud Aleph, 46a, the Mishnah states, Basek HaHeresh Im Yesh Kayoseh Bo Sheihmitz Harezeh Asur. This Mishnah discusses the following situation. When we have, shall we say, two or three doughs that were prepared by a person in order to bake them into matzah and they were allowed to sit around without being worked, without being uh, kneaded, without being rolled out for a period of time and one of these doughs has now obviously become chametz. There are obvious signs that it has become chametz but the other two shall we say there are no obvious signs that it has begun to become chametz that the process of leavening has, has kicked in. Do we say that these other two doughs, seeing that there is no apparent indication, no obvious indication of himuth, that we must, uh, that we can assume that it has not yet begun, or do we say, seeing that the third one, which was made at the same time under the same conditions, 
has already be, uh, has clearly become chametz, we must also assume, therefore, that the other two have also begun to become chametz. They are, for some reason, running behind schedule, so to speak, or not. It's not happening as quickly uh, with these two doughs as with the previous the, the previous dough, but it is taking place. This is the discussion of the Mishnah and the and the Talmud. The Mishnah states that if you have uh, two or more doughs that were made at the same time, and one has become obviously chametz, one is in the process, well into the process of uh, becoming chametz, then you must assume that the same is true for the other one as well. The next question, of course, that the Talmud asks is, and what, when you, what happens when you do not have more than one dough? You only made one dough. And this one dough has been allowed to sit aside for a, a time, and there are no apparent and obvious signs of himuth, of leavening, from what point must we begin to suspect that this dough has in fact begun, uh, begun to become leavened? Has be- the process of himuts has kicked in. Regarding this, the Talmud states, <laughs> If there is no other dough to which we can compare this dough, how do we know when it, it might have become chametz? That is what it says in most of the editions of the, of the Talmud and many of the Kitvaya, many of the manuscripts as well. I repeat, it says, the time that it takes to walk, for a person to walk from Migdal Nunaya to Tiberia or Teveria. And that distance is the distance of one mil. So it states in this version and many versions of the Talmud. We should also point out at this uh, point that a mil is usually defined halachically as 2,000 amoth. And an amma is a little bit less than half a meter. Therefore 2,000 amoth is a little bit less than one kilometer. Uh, Another measure of the mil uh, we will discuss presently. But that is the normal uh, figure given for the distance of one mil. Therefore, according to that version of the Talmud that we just read, the distance between Migdal Nunaya, which is a place that we'll discuss in a moment, and Teveria, is one mil. Now there are several problems uh, regarding this statement of the Talmud. First of all, we know where Tiberia is today. We also know where the ancient city of Tiberia, or as it was pronounced then, Tiberia, based on the Latin Roman name Tiberius. We know where the city was. We know where the uh, northernmost wall of the city of Tiberia was at that time, in Byzantine times, and a little bit before that, in the time of the Talmud and the Mishnah. And we know where, uh, approximately where the town known as uh, Migdal Nunaya, which literally means the, the uh, tower of, or the place of the fish, where this is a, a, a place known for its fishing industry. We know uh, the uh, geographical position of this place t- to this day, and we know, uh, and, we, and we also therefore have a place today in that vicinity known by that name, Migdal. And the distance between uh, the ancient city of Tiberia and Migdal is most certainly not one mil. It is not uh, anywhere near uh, one kilometer is much, much more. It is much closer to six kilometers. Another difficulty we have with this uh, version of the passage in the Talmud Bavli that we just quoted is the fact that the Talmud Yerushalmi says something very different. According to what we just learned in the Talmud Bavli, the version, the, the text as we read it, the distance between Migdal Nunaya and Tiberia is one meal, which we already explained is a problem, is, is a, a statement which doesn't, uh, does not uh, f- fit the facts. And second of all, that means that the time it takes for a dough uh, to become hametz, or at least the time, that, uh, the time elapsed time that has to pass for us to begin to suspect that a dough has begun the process of hemuth, of leavening, is the time it takes to walk one mil, whatever that time is, and we'll discuss that in a moment. But the Talmud Yerushalmi states on the very same Mishnah that the time elapsed, the elapsed time that we are looking at is the time it takes to walk four mil, not one mil, but four. We're talking about a difference, a factor of four. This is a huge difference, 
and can obviously not be reconciled. So one might therefore conclude uh, that uh, the Talmudim simply disagree as to the uh, the halachic definition of himuth, of leavening, or they disagree as to the elapsed time that may pass until we must begin to suspect that this dough is perhaps uh, has already begun to leaven. But that, of course, wouldn't really fit the facts either, because the uh, the, the Talmud in, in in the Talmud Bavli says that the distance is is the distance between point A and point B, and we know that that distance does not fit that text as we have it. Therefore, what we must do in such a case is to delve into the uh, all correct and ancient versions of the text of the Talmud Bavli and the Yerushalmi, and also look at the geography and understand the facts on the ground to see if we can make sense of such a conundrum. And upon closer investigation, we discover the following, that there are two uh, ancient manuscripts of the Talmud Bavli which have a different reading of the text. Now I'll read to you what it says. In uh, manuscript, uh, the Munich manuscript number six, the text reads, Amar Rabbi Abahu, Amar Lakish. This is an answer to the question, and what happens when there is no other dough to compare this dough to, and therefore how can we know when the process of Himutz may have begun? The answer given by Rish Lakish is, Kedeh Shialech Adam Mimigdal Nunaya Tiberia. The time it takes for a person to walk from Migdal Nunaya to Tiberia. You will note that it does not say anything about a meal. It just says the time it takes to go from point A to point B. So therefore is, there is no contradiction, there is no difficulty between this statement uh, of the Talmud according to this manuscript and the physical reality. Because if we know where those two points are, and even if we don't know where those two points are, all it's telling us is that if you know where these points are and you can time the, uh, the time involved, you can measure the time it takes to walk that distance, then you know how long uh, a dough may sit around without being worked, etc., uh, at which time you have to begin to suspect that it may be have begun the process of himus. This girsa appears also in another text, another ancient uh, manuscript, the Temani, a Yemenite manuscript, in the, in the New York Columbia uh, collection of manuscripts, and there it also says, Kadeshi Alech Adam Mimigdan Nunaya Tiberia. And that's it, that's all it says. It doesn't speak, say anything about a meal. And therefore, we uh, can begin to make some sense of what we have before us. Because if the true text of the Talmud Bavli reads, as we just read now in these two manuscripts, that all the Talmud is telling us is that you need to begin to be concerned and to consider this dough before you to have possibly begun the process of himutz. You need to be concerned and you need to take this into account and therefore consider it to be safek chametz, a possible uh, ham, uh, reality of chametz. Uh, as soon as the time uh, that has elapsed is equal to the time that it takes for a person to walk from point A to point B, that is to say from Migdal Nunaya to Tiberia. That is a simple straightforward statement of fact and if we know where those two points are on the map, which we do today as I have mentioned, we do know very precisely where these points were in ancient times and they're not so far from the present situation either, from the present reality, and we know the distance to be approximately six kilometers. This version of the statement of the Talmud Bavli in no way contradicts, nor does it differ from the statement of the Talmud Yerushalmi. All the Talmud Yerushalmi stated was that you must begin to uh, suspect that this dough has begun to leaven after the time that it takes a person to walk four mil has elapsed. And that fits very precisely with the distance mentioned by the Talmud Bavli, the time it takes to walk from Migdal Nunaya to Tiberia, as long as that is the text of the Talmud Bavli, without the addition of the word mil, that this refers to the distance of one mil. Why does it fit? Because, first of all, the distance between Migdal Nunaya and Tiberia is most certainly much more than a mil, and in fact it's also more than four mil if we understand a mil to be, as we said, 2,000 amoth, 2,000 amma, 2,000 cubits, which is a little bit less than one kilometer. The distance, in fact, is more like six kilometers. If we understand, on the other hand, that a mil is very often, the mil referred to by the Chazal is very often the Roman mile. The standard Roman mile was approximately 
1,481 meters, which is close to one and a half kilometers. If you multiply that by four, you get uh, quite obviously to the result of nearly six kilometers. And that fits quite precisely the distance between Migdal Nunaya, at least in ancient times, and Tiberia. And therefore, the, all these statements fit perfectly. So, first, the first thing we must understand, therefore, based on all of the foregoing, is that the correct reading of the Tamud Bavli, the correct girsa of the Tamud Bavli, is that the, the time elapsed can, can, is equal to the minimal uh, time elapsed, is equal to the time it takes to walk from Migdal Nunayat to Tiberia, which is a, a simple factual statement which does not contradict the geograph geographical realities and fits exactly what the Talmud Bavli also, I'm sorry, the Talmud Yerushalmi also states regarding the distance, which is four mil, if we understand the mil to be a Roman mile, which makes perfect sense because we're talking about a period where, the, where Eretz Yisrael is under Roman occupation and the standard measurement of distance was based on the Roman measurements, such as the Roman mile. Uh, the, all of this makes perfect sense. So how long does it take the average person to walk one mil? This, of course, is the second point that we need to address. If we assume that a mil, as discussed in this sugya, uh, is approximately one kilometer in length, and the average person walks a kilometer in approximately 12 minutes, we multiply uh, a mil, the time it takes to walk one mil, 12 minutes by four, we reach the conclusion that the minimal time in order to, for something to become chametz is 48 minutes. On the other hand, if we assume the, the average person walks approximately one kilometer in 15 minutes, we multiply that by four and we reach the conclusion that the minimal time for uh, dough to become chametz is 60 minutes, approximately one hour. On the other hand, if we define a meal, at least for the purposes of this sugya, uh, to refer to a Roman mile, which is nearly 50% more, as we explained. Therefore, we have to add 50% uh, to those figures. Therefore, instead of 12 minutes, we will be discussing 12 plus 6 minutes, which is 18 minutes, times 4 is 72 minutes. So therefore, the minimal time four of the distance, the time it takes to walk the distance of 4 mil equals 72 minutes. And if we assume a person is uh, walking uh, at a slower pace, uh, we have to add another 50% to the 15 minutes, and therefore that's another seven and a half minutes, therefore 22 and a half minutes per meal times four equals 90 minutes, one and a half hours. So the minimal time uh, of, uh, for a dough to possibly, to possibly become a chametz would be one and a half hours. From all of the above, it is apparent that the shortest possible time that we can calculate based on the facts as we know them based on the, on the texts, the accurate texts of those sugyoth as we have them. The shortest possible time uh, that uh, could be considered uh, a possible uh, elapsed time for a dough to become chametz would be 48 minutes. Certainly much, much more than the 18 minute figure that is usually mentioned, which is based, as we have explained, on the uh, mistaken text of the Talmud Bavli, which speak, speaks of a mil. It is true that this figure appears in, in most of the Posakim, but uh, as we showed, as we, as we have demonstrated, based on uh, some of the versions, the more correct versions of the Talmud Bavli itself, and based on the explicit statement of the Talmud Yerushalmi, and based on the geographical realities, there is no doubt, there can be no doubt, that the correct Yirsa is such that we are talking about the, what the Yerushalmi speaks of, and that is the time it takes to walk the distance of four mil, and it is m more than likely that we were, are referring to a Roman mile, and therefore we're talking about a distance of approximately six kilometers, which is exactly what we find on the map today between uh, the position of Migdal Nunaya in ancient times, which we are familiar with, and the uh, position or the northernmost point of the ancient, ancient city of Tiberia. Therefore, the, the claim that uh, a dough that, uh, that set aside for 18 minutes must be considered chametz is in no way uh, accurate, does not fit any of the uh, halachic texts or the geographical realities. 
Furthermore, the claim that the entire process for producing matzah must be begun and finished within an 18-minute period is also spurious, uh, because even according to the incorrect text uh, and the claim that the time involved uh, is, is one meal, the time it takes to walk one meal, and even if we assume this to be 18 minutes, the fact is that that is only referring to a dough that was left aside, that was not touched for that period of time. But if a dough is uh, mixed and then needed, even if it's needed all day, as, as we find in the, in the Talmud, as we find in all the Posakim, including the Shulchan Aruch, that if a dough is being needed even for hours, it does not become chametz. And as long as it's therefore being worked and rolled out and then placed on the, uh, uh, on the hot surface on, on which it is baked, as long as this is done without uh, being set aside for any length of time, the dough cannot possibly become chametz. This is a physical uh, uh, reality based on the chemical processes involved, which require that the dough be uh, left alone and allowed to uh, rest, so to speak, in order for it to rise properly. And therefore, the, the, uh, the concept of the 18-minute matzah is a fallacy. How long in reality does it take for a dough to begin to rise? First, let us just explain that we're talking here about a dough which consists entirely of uh, flour and water, perhaps salt, but not any leavening agent, no yeast, uh, no sourdough, etc. For such a dough to begin to rise, uh, in reality, will almost certainly not happen in less than one hour. No person familiar with uh, the, the uh, reality of preparing a dough and baking bread or baking matzah would claim that uh, such a thing is possible. Certainly not possible within 18 minutes. This is simply not uh, in keeping with the facts on the ground. The scientific and objective facts are that such a process will not begin in less than an hour, and very often it will begin for much, much longer than one hour. And this uh, finding, this objective reality, is also entirely in keeping with all the uh, halachic and talmudic facts that we have explained. Can a person deliberately allow the dough intended for the making of matzah to be set aside for up to one hour? No, most certainly not. The halachic requirement is l'chat that a person, uh, once the dough has been mixed, the flour and the water have been mixed together, the process should be done quickly and efficiently without allowing the dough to be set aside, even for one moment, without it being worked in some manner. The Talmud and the Mishnah are discussing a situation where this happened, not deliberately, but by accident apparently. A dough was left alone for a long period of time, and the question is, at what point do we begin to suspect that it may have begun to become hametz. But the khathila, the halachic norm and the halachic requirement is that without becoming obsessive or, or um, uh, frantic, a person needs to mix the flour and the water and move uh, forward briskly uh, and complete the process of kneading. Um, I should mention in passing that kneading is very important in order to produce uh, a, a good quality matzah, just as it is required uh, for a good quality bread. So one has to knead for quite some time, I would say uh, between 8 to 10 minutes at least, and then move on to the uh, part uh, of uh, rolling out the p uh, separate pieces of dough and placing them in the oven. This should all be done without any break, without any deliberate uh, time where the dough is not being worked. The all-out discussion uh, that we've uh, discussed in this interview has referred to uh, a dough that was accidentally left aside and, and therefore from what point must, must we begin to suspect that it may have become, begun to leaven. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.